I'm Emily Curran. This is uh, Emily Horbar. That's Andrew Jacoby. And we're three members of the NYC Life team. So, sorry, I got thrown for a loop. I didn't think we were next. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, New York City, one of the greatest cities on the planet, is um, one of the most visited tourist destinations in the world. Um, every year, 49 million people come to New York City to discover, whether that's the Empire State Building, the Brooklyn Bridge, or Times Square. Um, and what is tourism but discovery? But for uh, some 8 million other people, it's home. But that doesn't mean that the discovery has to end. You can be a tourist in your very own city. So when we came to this project, we thought, look at these people. What do they all have in common? Um, you know, for as many people there are in New York and for how busy it is, um, it can tend to be a little bit siloed, uh, socioeconomically, uh, racially, uh, ethnically, geographically. Um, and we thought, how do you create um, a station that appeals to all these people? And it was sort of a difficult proposition at first because we thought, okay, do we, do we appeal to seniors? Do we appeal to kids? Do we appeal, who's watching this? Are we appealing to people in Manhattan? Are we appealing to people in, you know, in Queens? Um, and the question uh, brought us back to sort of a philosophical question of the difference between form and matter. And we thought, it's not so much what you're showing, it's what you are. And we thought, um, what this station can be is really a forum for all these people to get together and share what is best about New York City. Um, so our challenge, obviously, was that you have this asset. You have this asset that the city owns. Um, and how do you go from being um, an asset that some people know about and watch on the television station to being an idea and to being something um, that people are actively engaged in? But at the same time, um, our opportunity and our challenge were very much intertwined because we saw this as, um, I, I moved from California this year, and um, one of the things that I noticed most about New Yorkers that actually sets them apart from um, a lot of the country is how much they love giving directions. Um, people can be a little bit rude until you ask them how to get somewhere or what the best place to get a bagel or go to dinner is, and then it's, you know, they're, they're engaged. So we saw, we see the brand of this station as being a place for New Yorkers to give each other directions. And we're going to lay out the strategy for that. So what is it right now? You have a station that's mission is to be um, sort of uh, the go-to for arts and culture uh, for, for New York City. It's, it's a station most of all right now. But what we want to do is we want to go from being a station, you see the people on the left, they're passively watching the station, to these people on the right, um, they're engaged. It's a two-way dialogue. It's not a conversation where somebody's talking at you. It's a conversation um, uh, throughout the city. And so getting this, this, this space from left to right is what we saw our challenge being on this project. Um, so what our, what our real goal is, is, it's, is to go um, from 1.5 million users or uh, viewers a week to 2 million uh, viewers a week. And we see the way to do this is through establishing a network effect. But in order to do that, um, you have to um, establish a brand. And we see the brand of this station as being um, one of local tourism, uh, sort of a station and um, a website and all of, um, of guess what's. Um, because one of, the, one of the main things that we kept coming back to was the idea that um, while your television set has traditionally in the past been the way to consume media, there's all these other ways that NYC Life um, can and is connecting with people. Um, but the one thing that's going to persist is, is the brand. And so it all has to drive back to the brand. And so uh, mostly what we're going to talk to you about is how you can strengthen and drive this brand in a sustainable and authentic way. Um, so I'm going to uh, turn it over to Emily to get into the branding. Thanks. OK. So now we want to talk about um, some of the strategic recommendations that our team made to try and bring build awareness of the NYC Life brand. So as we all know, every great brand has a really compelling logo. But as it stood, the NYC Life logo didn't really create a literal connection between what NYC Life is and how a viewer can go and obtain the, the content. So our suggestion here is to create the actual number 25 within the logo to try and create a more literal connection for anyone who sees this logo. So envision that you're 
in the subway or you're looking at an ad on television and you see this NYC 25, it, it creates a much more direct connection for you to know where to go to obtain this great content. And we thought from there, we could really link that 25 into all of our different promotional and content ideas to create a theme and to drive home this concept that 25 is the place to go for this great content. Um, this could even uh, be expanded into our print advertising where we would create more visible um, indication that Channel 25 is the home base for this great content um, from NYC Life. But in addition to that, we don't just want to engage the user, as Emily said, just on the television channel. We want to create a dialogue and a two-way street. So we wanted to create more prominent visibility for our social media presence in the advertising so that people understand how they can engage with the brand and how it can be a give and take. Um, but we don't just want our brand to be stagnant. We want our brand to actually come to life quite literally. So our suggestion here is to create a face of NYC life. As we've seen with VJs on MTV or the host of a morning talk show, being able to associate a face with a brand makes a much more compelling experience for a, for a consumer. So imagine Kelly Choi giving a tour of a historic secret New York location or Dan Evans acting as the um, guest bartender at his favorite local watering hole. These are great opportunities for us to bring the brand to life and take it out of the television set and into the city to really connect with the viewer. But it doesn't just, um, we're not just restricting engagement with the city to this personality. We think even the NYC Life staff could create a street team where if they wore branded jackets, they could go out into the city and while they were doing their everyday activity of filming, even create a marketing opportunity and increase the brand interaction with city dwellers. But it isn't just NYC Life that's going to be engaging, it's New Yorkers engaging with each other. So we wanted to use things like social media in order to help New Yorkers speak to each other and really promote this dialogue. So one of our suggestions was to create a social media kiosk. This is an example from a company called iSnap. And essentially these would be set up at cool, interesting locations throughout the city where people could take a picture of themselves, upload it to their Facebook page with a branded NYC Life picture, and then be able to alert their friends and followers to the fact that NYC Life had guided them to this really exciting and interesting place. And what better way to engage people while they're out and, and interacting with the city than with geo-social um, platforms like Foursquare. So our idea here is to have 10 New Yorkers, real New Yorkers, tell te other New Yorkers about great places that they've been. So they would select the top 10 and then check in at all those places and receive, of course, an NYC Life badge. But the idea here being that we could then promote that top 10 and have people learn from each other about great places in the city. So those are some of the ideas that we had around brand awareness, and now we will talk about partnerships. Great. Thanks, Emily. Sure. So we already know that NYC Life um, has had a lot of success in creating partnerships around marketing in particular, and in some cases around content development. But a key piece of our uh, strategy revolves around continuing to build partnerships around the content development side, and of course utilizing um, partners for some uh, creative ways of financing some of some of uh, the larger goals of the station. Oh, sorry, right, what did I just, do? just the right thing. You scroll. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Down. Down. No. Ah. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> so our first idea, uh, or our first partnership, uh, is would be an advisory board. Um, so these would be some of the movers and shakers in um, in the city's media uh, industry. We would get together uh, without any kind of managerial uh, role or oversight role, uh, but they'd get together once, uh, once every month, once every two months, uh, to talk about ways to create new content, um, both either um, brainstorming ways to create that content or even coming up with creative solutions to acquire that content, especially among some of the uh, underutilized libraries of some of the media companies in New York. Um, so. The kinds of people that we want are not only people that are influential in the media industry, but also people that really want to give back to New York in a very targeted way. They have this skill and background in, in, uh, in media and content generation, um, and we want the kind of people that uh, would get really excited about using that background and skill to give back to the city. We reached out to a small group of people already to just gauge some interest, but um, we, we can think of a number of companies uh, that uh, we'd like to reach out to um, and try to get some representatives to get this going. So the second idea, and we know that um, NYC Life has uh, has attempted has, has made some attempt in the past to reach out to sponsors and get sponsors directly involved in content generation. Um, but we think this is such an important way 
to engage uh, New York City centric brands um, in, in a way that um, really adds to the viewership experience. So we looked at three best practices or three different um, ways that other networks are, um, are using partnerships to develop really special kinds of content. The first one is uh, Sundance Channel. Um, they've engaged uh, Grey Goose to help them develop Iconoclasts, which is a show where two really impressive people sit down for a day um, and just do whatever it is that they do. Uh, but that day always starts out with a Grey Goose beverage. So it's a way that, um, I, I don't know if everyone's day starts out with a Grey Goose beverage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good way to, to um, have this brand that's an aspirational brand directly involved in the content creation. The second idea, or the, or the second uh, best practice, is what Bravo does with Fiat. Um, they have a show called Work of Art. It's a reality TV show where artists are competing against each other. And Fiat created a show where uh, the artists were competing using a, um, the, the spare parts from a Fiat to create something special. So that's a way that uh, the brand was able to directly uh, involve itself in, this, in the show in a cool way. And the third one is this uh, seasonal miniseries called Neverland. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think, a three-part series. Uh, there's a, and they partnered with K Jewelers to put this on. Um, there's, I don't, as far as I know, since it hasn't um, aired yet, I, I doubt that there's too much in the way of jewelry, but there's a lot of like sparkly images and it makes you think of jewelry. Um, one of the important ways, or one of the reasons that we thought this was an important example is that they were able to engage K for a very short, limited uh, time frame um, and limit the, the investment uh, necessary to make this happen. So there's a lot of different brands that we think are very New York centric and would um, could could interact with with viewers on screen at NYC Life in a very positive way. Um, but we also think that in addition to just you know the relationship shouldn't just be giving money, maybe having uh, you know ads or or a, a, a vodka beverage shown on TV. Uh, it should be more than that. So there's, um, there's lots of creative ways to engage these kinds of companies. For example, we thought of like Gourmet Garage. There's a lot of cooking shows on NYC Life. Um, it could be really interesting to have uh, you know, the last five minutes of a show be the, um, the, the, the chef walking through a Gourmet Garage and showing uh, the viewers how they can get the ingredients to make a specific recipe. So the last partnership that we wanted to highlight is uh, reaching out to and utilizing the, the vast networks of, uh, of film students here in the city. Um, so we've, we've talked a lot about the difficulties and the expense of generating fresh new content. But we have young film students who are trying to do this just for fun or for their own advancement every single day. Um, and we think there's a lot of value in NYC Life potentially reaching out to universities and even creating something similar to what we have here, like a master class where you have a professor who is leading students through, um, sorry, who's, who's leading students through this class and, and, and um, generating content with them. It's a very inexpensive and uh, non-labor intensive way for NYC Life to not only um, have con create content but also engage with the, the future content creators uh, in the city. So, this is the, uh, the, the last image that we wanted to leave you with. This is an image from um, the New York City Marathon, which is uh, a very iconic image of the city. It's, it's one day where New Yorkers get together um, to celebrate the accomplishments of certain New Yorkers, and in general, just the, the diversity of New York. And they were, people run through all five boroughs. Uh, it's a great event. Um, and we thought that this was, uh, th this was th the fact that New Yorkers are so proud of this is a uh, testament to the fact that New Yorkers really do celebrate their, their diversity. So, what, so Emily Curran talked about um, when we first started this project, the, the difficulty of wrapping our heads around this idea that the, the station should speak to all New Yorkers simultaneously. But we think that, um, you know, we've, we've tried to lay out a few ideas today of, of ways that you can engage all New Yorkers at the same time and make NYC life another thing that New Yorkers can be proud of, along with their diversity and the New York City Marathon. <laughs> so in, in conclusion, we wanted to thank all of, uh, all of the many people who helped us put this together, uh, both the, the NYC, uh, NYC Life staff that we worked with, um, our mentors, uh, Robin and Cliff and John. Um, this was a, a team collaboration. We had a lot of help in, uh, in, in putting this together. So thank you very much. <laughs>